Hey there, and welcome back. So um, I was traveling the past uh, two weeks, so we didn't have a Facebook Live session over the past two weeks, but we're back now, and I wanted to talk to you about increasing the value of your work. So one of the things that I'm hearing on a constant basis is, I don't know how to price my work, I don't know what the right value is. Like, you obviously wanna offer you know, good value to your clients, but at the same time, you don't wanna undercut your own pricing. And so the question then becomes, well, what should you charge? And, um, and how can I attract clients who are looking for a more comprehensive solution? In other words, how do I not attract clients that are just looking for kind of cheap, one-off, you know, $1,000 or, or less, $500 websites, and instead start attracting people who are looking for like larger projects? And um, so what I want to talk about today, oh, by the way, so I'm Lee Blue, I'm the founder of DoubleStack, and I personally mentor web designers to help you build your own six-figure web design business that you can run on your own, and even scale that up to your own agency if you want to. So, um, so that's who I am, but today, let's talk about how to increase the value of your work, because that seems to be one of the big things that keeps coming up over and over. Um, you know, people are attracting leads and the leads are only want to spend a little bit. And if you say, well, I'm, if you're looking to charge like $2,500 as a bare minimum, a lot of times people are saying, wow, that's just way too expensive. And, and their leads are only looking for like thousand dollar project or something like that. And so what's, what are the options So what can you do? So let's go through three different options that I see show up all the time. And the first option is obviously an unsatisfactory option, but it's to cave, right? It's just to say, okay, well, you know, I'll just, I'll just keep lowering the price until we get down to something that's going to work for the client. And then you do that. And of course, that tends to be people that have the mindset of, well, you know, this person needs a website. I can build the website. I could use the work. I want the money. So I'll just kind of keep shrinking down the project until whatever I'm expected to do kind of fits within the budget. And even if it's a really inexpensive thing, like a couple hundred bucks, 500 bucks, thousand dollars, something like that, then we'll still do it. But I'm just going to race through. I'm going to cut corners. I'm going to just do the bare minimum to, you know, to get the project out the door. And then maybe the next, the next project will be better. <laughs> so option one cave, don't do that. You know, that's, that's not really helping anybody. So let's figure out what, what are some other things that you can do that are better than just, just caving. Well, the next approach is to argue the value, to try to get the client to see the value by kind of underscoring the points, right? So like talking about your years of experience and how awesome your projects are compared to other people's and how, how great your customer support's gonna be. And you're in the same times on your local, like um, the cheap web developers are just gonna leave you with a slow performing site that's not secure, that you can't update, and it's not gonna perform well. And so you kind of go through all these technical reasons why your work is better than less expensive work. And, and, it, and this is really frustrating. And the reason why this ends up being so frustrating is because a lot of times the client will agree, right? Like they'll say, yes, it makes sense. It would be better to work with you. You're obviously more, you know, more experienced than, than these other cheaper alternatives, but they go with the cheaper alternatives anyway. And that's the part that's so frustrating. It's like you can actually succeed at getting the client to see the value, but the client still says, well, it's still, you know, it's still out of my budget. I don't have the, I don't have the, you know, it's, it's just, I just can't spend 2,500 or 3,000 or 5,000. You know, th those prices are just so far outside of what I was expecting. I'm really looking for something around a thousand bucks or less. And so that's why that's so frustrating. So arguing the value from, you know, justifiable position. So like you've got a degree, you've been doing this for 10 years, you know, all of these big things, a lot of times the client will actually concede and be like, it does make sense that you would charge more than the people who are doing, you know, less quality, offering less quality than you are, but I'm going to go with the lower quality anyway. <laughs> and so you end up losing the project because basically the price is kind of out of the client's budget and it just all falls apart from there. So option one and option two tend not to really pan out the way that the way that you would want and that's why everybody stays stuck and they're like well i don't know what to do if i if i don't want to cave and lower my price and i can't actually underscore the value of my work by emphasizing my portfolio and my years of work and experience and you know great customer service what do i do i'm stuck i don't know what to do next and the real solution of how web designers are able to increase the value of your work is to solve a bigger problem Right? That's ultimately what the issue is. The clients are coming to you only looking to solve a small problem, which is they just want a quick website. They're not looking for something more expensive. And even if you offer something more comprehensive and better, they'll oftentimes revert back to just wanting an inexpensive solution from somebody else because they don't have a big problem to solve. And so if it's a small problem, it kind of leads to a small solution. 
And so the answer is, you got to attract clients looking for bigger solutions. So upgrade the, the value of the problem that you're solving, and that will increase the value of your work. But here's the issue. A lot of times you have to think, well, why am I attracting clients looking for small solutions? Like what's going on there? Like, how do I attract better clients? And so my recommendation for you is look, read your own website, like go onto your website and look at the website that you've created for yourself and see what you say. Like, are you saying things that would lead somebody to believe that you can just spin off a quick website, that you've got a, a lot of technical skills that you can kind of use to, to fulfill that kind of a need? Or have you positioned yourself in a way that people understand, hey, you're really solving a much more critical problem than just a website? Because most of the time, like most small business owners, if you really were to ask them and kind of get down into the heart of the issue, they don't believe their website's gonna ge generate leads. They don't believe the website's gonna do anything. It's, it's like today, most people believe their website's kind of on the same caliber as like their business cards. It's like, it's just a formality. They're like, if you're gonna be in business and you, and you don't wanna look stupid, <laughs> then get a website. And so what that means is the problem they're trying to solve is not to look stupid. That's basically the bottom line. To, to not look stupid when their clients say, well, do you have a website? They don't want to say, no, I don't have a website because then they'd look stupid. So what they want to do is they want to just kind of get something to kind of patch that hole as cheaply as possible. And so that's why they go with these low budget alternatives because it's good enough to look pretty decent. Like they don't want something that looks unprofessional or they obviously don't want to have like no website at all. So they want something that's just kind of that bare minimum thing. And another way to think about it is like, if you're just going to sit around in your house and like watch a movie or whatever, you're not going to just dress up in like a $5,000 Armani suit to do that. Why? Because the goal is just to not be naked while you're sitting around in your house watching a movie, right? Like that's the ultimate goal there. And so you don't spend, you know, thousands of dollars on a fancy outfit to solve that problem. Now, if you were going to go out and have this big business meeting and you wanted to, you know, create this air of being professional and impressive and all this other stuff, yeah, well, then maybe you invest a lot more in, your, in what you wear and all, in, in your outfit and so forth. But if the, if the issue is, hey, I just want to sit around my house and not be naked while I do it, <laughs> then it's like you just put on a t-shirt or whatever and go on about your day. It's not worth it to spend a lot of money to solve a small problem. And so that's what the overall issue is. So what I found to be the case is that there are basically two problems that most web designers tend to have. And if you're kind of, if you're, if you feel like you're going to, you just kind of want to do this like honest review of what's going on, then, you know, look at your website. And I think you're going to find two things. The first thing you'll probably find is you've positioned yourself as a technical resource. And what that means is you've probably listed a bunch of services. Like I do web design, I do graphic design, I can do branding and logos, I can get you business cards, I can do brochures and flyers and like just a bunch of different things that are just kind of raw services. And what that means is people that have that small thing, oh, I just need a quick business card, I just need a logo for cheap, I just need a quick website, they're going to see your services and think that that's what you do. And so that tends to be part of the problem. The other half of the problem is you've probably built a reputation for yourself as being like an affordable web designer, right? And so this could be, this happens in a variety of ways. One way it happens is you, um, you kind of take on the friends and family discount people, right? Like you're just trying to get your portfolio up. You take on some cheap projects from friends and family, just anybody you know who might need a website anyway. And so you just kind of offer to do it for really inexpensive rates. And then what happens is you start to get referrals. And then the referrals come in and they're kind of expecting like the same deal that you gave to the person who referred them. And so you begin to develop this reputation as being an, an affordable web designer. And so those are the two problems that tend to happen. It's like your online persona is someone who offers these services. And most clients are thinking of the services as just a quick way to solve a simple, small problem, like get a business card, get a quick website. And that is kind of a low ticket way to attract leads. And then you've got the reputation issue where you've kind of just branded yourself as an affordable solution for, for websites and so forth. And so that means that the cold leads that are coming to you through your website, they're going to have these low budget expectations and your referrals are going to want the same kind of <laughs> affordable deal that you give to everybody else. So the solution is you got to shift. You have to shift and, and not just offer a website but actually offer some sort of a transformational shift for your client's business in terms of their lead generation, in terms of their business development, in terms of their overall marketing. You really wanna combine all of your best stuff, like all the things that you do the best into a 
transformational solution for people that actually solves a bigger problem. And then you want to do, you want to upgrade those two things. You want to upgrade your website. So you're not just selling services, but you're selling much better outcomes for people. Like, you know, like things that really matter, like things you, like if, if a client needs more, more leads and they need more revenue coming in and they're not making payroll and they've got all these issues going on, they're not going to go to somebody who's offering a $500 website and think this is going to solve the day. What, you, what they want is somebody who can actually fix that problem, like that bigger issue. So if you upgrade the caliber of the problem that you solve, suddenly you start attracting better leads that are looking for higher ticket solutions because you're solving a really big issue. And so that's kind of the overall idea is you need to upgrade the value of the problem that you're solving. And when you do that, you dramatically increase your rates. You just kind of instinctively, naturally fall into clients that are looking for larger projects. And, they're, and a lot of times they're, they're long-term clients as well, because like if you get into lead generation and marketing and business development and stuff like that, people want that stuff to keep going. <laughs> like you, like you, you never run out of things to do. And so you, you constantly have that recurring revenue. So what will happen is your clients will get you on board for, for, with these monthly retainers. So you end up having two parts to the equation. You have the initial setup part where you're kind of building everything out and giving your client the tools they need to be successful. And then you actually start executing and you start using the tools to start generating leads and, and getting more calls on the calendar and growing your client's business. And that's a much bigger problem, right? Because again, what we talked about is most business owners don't believe their website solves any problems, really. They're just trying to have the bare minimum <laughs> to not look ridiculous, not look stupid, to not look, they don't want to be unprofessional. Like they don't want to say, I don't have a website because then they look stupid. But so what they do is they just fill the gap with the cheapest possible solution to kind of meet that bare minimum standard. And that's why all of these, all of these clients appear to have these low budget expectations. So the solution is don't just position yourself as someone who, who sells cheap websites. Like, so if you look at your website and you think that the way that you've described yourself is, hey, here I am, I build websites, you're gonna attract people that want these cheap, low budget websites. So you'll attract short term clients and they're gonna be low ticket. Right? They're short term in the sense that you build the site and they're done and then they're off and you don't have any real retainer in place with the possible exception of maybe some cheap hosting. But that's not going to get you really anywhere. You need to be charging somewhere at least, you, ideally you'd like to be charging about a thousand bucks a month as a minimum on your retainer, somewhere in that space. And then get yourself somewhere around five to 10 clients and make 50 to 100 grand a year off of recurring revenue. Like that tends to be the pattern that you're gonna to wanna to go for if you're um, a single web designer or uh, a small agency. Because you don't wanna to have to spend all this time doing lead generation, because that's expensive, it's time consuming and it'll burn you out. And the better solution is get long-term clients that, that hire you on retainer that are looking for that transformational shift in their business. They're looking for something that makes a difference for them. They're not just looking to fill a gap with a cheap website. And when you do that, you're gonna find that you become a high ticket web consultant, web designer, and you'll be landing clients over $10,000 or more. And if you wanna see some examples, just go over to doublestack.net and look at the Doublestack five figure family. It's like, there's you know, dozens of people out there that are landing these $10,000 and up clients. And when you do, I actually mail you this trophy. This is the double stack five figure family trophy. And when you and I are working together to kind of get these types of clients rolling for you, I'm going to mail that to you, put it on your desk, and then you'll be part of the five figure family too. It'll be awesome. And you'll, you'll stack your portfolio with somewhere around seven or eight clients, something like that. And that is about where you need to be to generate a six figure income with a web design business that you can run right out of your house. So, um, so that's the idea. Here's the bottom line. So here's the main takeaway. The main takeaway is the high ticket web designers are not selling access to their skills. What they're doing is they're using their skills to generate transformational results for their clients. That's, that's really the bottom line. That's the important point. You're not just selling access to your skills because if that's who you are, your clients are going to think, oh, well, they had the skill to build a quick website. I have a little bit of money. I have 500 bucks or whatever. Let me hire those people to get access to those skills for a second so then I get this cheap website. So the high ticket web designers are not selling access to their skills. What they're doing is they're, they're using those skills, right? So you're still building websites, of course, but you're doing other things too. You're doing marketing, lead generation, setting up funnels, email marketing. There's other things that you can be doing and you're using your skills to generate these transformational results for your clients. And otherwise, you're, 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 other words, you're, you're, you're extending the problem. You're, you're solving a bigger problem. Solving a bigger problem means you've increased your value dramatically. So that's the idea. And if you feel like this is what you want to do and you want to start landing these, you know, these five figure clients and, and you want one of these trophies, 
then let's talk about it. So head over to doublestack.net and find a time to talk. And we'll get on the phone for like 45 minutes and we'll go over what this means for you because the bottom line in terms of being able to solve a big problem is you wanna be able to bundle together all the stuff that you do the best. And that's gonna be your web design skills and kind of like your, your, your setup skills with the web design websites, uh, logos and stuff like that, but also your marketing skills. Like what can you do to actually generate leads and actually get more customers in the door and get more brand visibility and, and get, you know, get those types of results to happen. And then on top of that, the third thing is, what markets are you most interested in? Like, where do you feel like you could have the most impact? Like, what do you know the most about? And basically what you're doing is you're taking those three things and smushing them all together. And that basically is your sweet spot. Like, that's where you wanna be. That's the thing that you do the best that's better than everybody else. And that means you can charge the most for it. So that's the whole idea. And a lot of times it's really helpful to talk through that to kind of get clarity on what that is because when you're by yourself and you're trying to figure it all out, a lot of times it's like you're kind of stuck inside the bottle and you're trying to read the label, but you can't read the label from inside the bottle. And if you get that outside perspective, that's oftentimes very helpful. So head on over to doublestack.net slash call. You'll see my calendar pop up, schedule a time that works well for you. We'll get on the phone for like 45 minutes and we'll go through all of these details to make sure that you have clarity on what it is that you want to be doing and who do you want to be working with and, and what are those big problems that you can really solve? Like how do we upgrade your online presentation so that people understand that you're not just someone who spins off cheap websites, but you have these transformational high ticket solutions that people really want. So head over to doublestack.net slash call. Uh, pick a time that works for you. Right after you schedule your time, you're gonna see a second page pop up. That second page is going to be like a quick little application where you can tell me a little bit more about your business, give me a link to your website so I can kind of prepare for the call so that when we get on the phone for 45 minutes, we'll be able to pack that 45 minutes with as much fun and value as possible. So head over to doublestack.net slash call and uh, I look forward to talking to you. See you then.